What's going on, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Bobby Five back with my man, Eric Sheets Haber, doing the FanDuel lineup build show. Uh, we uh, just did a drafting show. Hopefully, you were able to check that out. We will also be on QLTV at 4 Eastern time doing a live show, so check that out. Um, but Sheets, uh, first thoughts, uh, the differences between DraftKings and FanDuel, obviously, there's a lot of them today. So what jumped out to you? Well, the ownership is, is certainly going to be different. Um, so guys that I might end up playing on DraftKings, I'm uh, looking to fade on FanDuel a little bit. And um, uh, the, as usual, you know, the, that extreme value that pops up on, say, DraftKings, just because of the way FanDuel works, it's just not as, as lucrative to, to, to get to those guys uh, over on FanDuel. So guys that might not be really, really popular on DraftKings, like Boban or something like that, just become someone you just don't need over here. So that, that kind of lends itself to different constructions all around. Um, uh, I'm, I'm still going to be probably going to end up similarly on both sites with respect to the more balanced build type things anyway. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I like the more balanced build. I would, I do think some interesting shots you can take. I mean, we'll get to the position by position, but like you, like a guy like Jordan McRae, who you mentioned, if you wanted to go for a different type of build and play Luca and Trey together um, or something like that with, you know, getting some still of the New Orleans game and maybe playing Jokic, you could all of a sudden then start playing guys like that. So we'll get into position by position. I think there's a lot of different options. So starting with point guard, who is it? Who do you have at the top uh, in terms of priorities? Yeah, so the point guard, I have four guys that are kind of uh, – standing out with respect to values and one of one of them is just much more popular than the others and i and he ranks like lowest of all of them for me so we'll get to we'll get to that first so peyton i don't i don't really like on FanDuel. i'd like the other guys just a lot better um and those guys being trey luca and fox so um you can certainly play any of those three guys and be very very you know, comfortable whatever i think those are all very very strong plays they're all going to be owned, but if they're going to be all lower owned than than, Trey, than Elf, you can you can have the Elf if you want to know the truth. So, I put in Trey and Fox just just because here, but I can certainly like you were just intimating. You know, I I could you could build with Fox and Luca. You could build with Luca and Trey. I mean, however you want to go, you 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 have kind of you have good war points and good matchups. And well, uh, Luca is a little bit trickier, but uh, I think all three of those guys are just fine. Yeah, agreed. Um... I think that it's uh, Trey Luca and and Fox are the first guys who stand out to me, and then you get into the Lonzo potential and uh, and uh, Chris Paul, who I actually think is kind of interesting. I'm sort of interested in that sort of this sort of tier, but I don't really know that I want to commit to it enough. So I'm sort of struggling with the uh, the fourth guy I might use, but those three are definitely the ones who are standing out for me. Uh, I don't mind Jamal Murray if you want to go different. I don't mind Elf Payton if you want to go different, if he's going to be lower owned over here. Same thing with Conley. If we get no Bruce Brown, Brandon Knight's in play. But I think mostly it's those three, and then I'm trying to figure out who the other one will be based on. Yeah, so the next the next guy, the, the last guy tossed for me is a guy that you mentioned on draft. So I'll throw it out there. You have any interest in Chris Paul over here? I do like – I said Chris Paul. Um, oh, you did? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I do like Chris Paul. Um, okay. It's uh, – it's especially at probably low ownership what – is hard is that I like the idea of if I play Luca and Trey to play them together and then sort of play Fox with someone else. Um, but I'm have two big lineups on FanDuel, so just to give it away, you know, I'm trying to decide between Chris Paul. I don't want to play Fox necessarily again. I'm sorry, uh, 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 Trey again, but I might. Um, I just don't think that that, that uh, the ownership's going to be quite where it should be on Fox or uh, Chris Paul tonight. So. I, it'll be 20-ish percent, I would bet, but not as high as I, I think you need to go. I don't know if this is the position that you need to differentiate, I guess, is my overall thinking. At, at, at shooting guard, um, and this is a very similar idea to DraftKings. So, so Jimmy Butler, for me, rates to be the best play, okay, um, as far as values and all that stuff goes, relative to the other players, the position and things like that. Um, he's going to be very highly owned as well. So, you know, take that. I was talking about the grain of salt, whatever it is, but he certainly looks to be, a, you know, kind of a safe play. For for me, the 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 shooting guards underneath is where it gets really, really bunchy, and that that's where I will not. I would love to not play too much chalk there. So first guy, with that said, the first guy I put in here, Josh Richardson, is going to be really chalky. Um, and in full disclosure, I mean, I don't really find him to be that much better than some of these others. So. Let's let's go through them. So so Kevin Herter, 
and Barrett, both those guys are also going to be somewhat chalky. So I'm not too, not too thrilled with those guys either. I mean, again, they're fine, but they're just part of a whole bunch. So if you want to go different, uh, as far as ownership goes, you could play Donovan Mitchell, who I think, uh, you know, certainly is within that group of values. You could pay up a little bit for, for Shea. I say pay up because relative to his, his, his um, DraftKings price. And as you mentioned, uh, whatchamacallit, Jordan McRae rates to be kind of an interesting 3,700 guy over here. The, the last two guys, again, uh, sorry, it's just like a lot of guys here. One guy I put in is Bogdan. And the reason why I put in Bogdan Bogdanovich is, yeah, he just rates to be another one of those guys in that range. But because I want to stack the game and play maybe Ingram or somebody else in New Orleans, that's why he get, kind of gets the nod for me. And the other guy, again, is, you know, if I wanted to pay, play Butler, I would consider playing Devontae Graham um, as the other shooting guard. So, again, I know that's a lot of guys, and I'm sure I – I didn't even cover – I didn't even get to Drew Holiday, who I really don't even like over here. So there is a lot of guys you can play as far as shooting guard goes, but, you know, that's just the way the slate's working out. Yeah, I like Richardson still at 5K, and I understand he'll be pretty popular. Um, I like taking a shot on McCray. I like uh, Bogdanovich and Heald both, and they're both going to be your super low on plays over here. So that's where I'm leaning, and I don't mind going up to Drew either. Uh, Herder is also another one who I don't mind chalk. So I'll go chalk in one spot and probably use the other differentiators. And mostly it's going to be the Sacramento guys for me uh, or Drew. So I guess one of the three guys from those games with one of the chalk, uh, Richardson's or Herder's. I think I'm skipping Butler a little bit. Um, and that's on purpose. I, it's fine. <laughs> super, high on, super high ownership. Uh, I think there's a lot of other ways to go. I'm treating this like a very small slate because I really have one game that I'm interested in, in really attacking uh, that I feel good about, and the other ones I don't. One guy we didn't talk about was R.J. Barrett, I don't think. And yeah, I mentioned him as like one of those guys I think is going to be too chalky relative to how, how much he's better than any of these other guys. So that's, that's – I mean, he's fine. Um, I don't think he's like that great. Though. How about that? Yeah, you just have R.J. Barrett versus Richardson versus Herter versus yep. – uh, you know, those four. But I, I do think that getting Buddy Heald and some Bogdanovich exposure is a great way to differentiate yourself from the field. And um, that's what I'm looking to do. Yeah. Or Drew, who's also going to be going on. So the reason why um, I'm not going to be getting to Drew at 89 over here, or 88, whatever he is, is, is it small forward. I, I really, really want to play Ingram here. Um, I think he's just a really, really good play. And remember, the small forward position is usually a big dumpster fire on, on, on FanDuel. But, but for today, when there's a game I'd like to kind of stack and there's a guy who looks pretty good here, um, yeah, he's going to be owned, but he's not going to be through the roof. I think that I, I really want to play him. So that's why I'm off. not going to play Drew at 89 over at shooting guard. Um, the guys are getting ownership. I'm, I'm not going to have any of this. I'm not going to have any of this DFS or THJ. You can, you can, someone else can have that. Um, Barton is fine, another chalky guy. Um, but Ingram's going to be my favorite. And then the next place I would go is, again, not a guy I like to play all that often, but today when I have pretty well stacked up and I know what else I want to do, I'll, 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 I'll plug in my, my gallon area 6,300 here. I, I think it's oh, just fine. Um, if, if I didn't need that, in other words, if I was a little, if I didn't want that safety, I could, we could play Jay Crowder, uh, who we could talk about. He's a little more volatile. Um, and the only other guy I thought of is, again, is Tobias Harris. I just really just – I'm just kind of sick of playing him. And he's been fine. You know what I mean? It's just every day every day you have to click that freaking either Gordon Hayward or, 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 or Tobias Harris or Jalen Brown when he's playing button on, on, on at small forward on FanDuel. I just kind of like to take a break. But he's certainly a better play here than on DraftKings. I'm certainly have no issues with him. But with, 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 with him beat back, I'm just, I'm just kind of off of him. So, for me, my two guys here are Ingram just because he fits the rest of what I want to do. And Gallinari, because, you know, for a change, I kind of, I kind of want a kind of a safe guy at some point. Yeah, um, I, like, I, I like Harris, and I like the two spend-ups. Um, uh, excuse me, uh, Harris and – sorry, I'm trying to look at my Ingram. Line. Ingram. Um, I also like uh, – if I go down, I really like – I think Harrison Barnes' price in this kind of a matchup, where he can get 30 so easily – and he's probably not going to get less than 25 pretty much. I feel like he's just a fine, safe play that actually goes under own. Is he under 5K still? Yeah, he's 49. Yeah. And then I, so I, so I have uh, – like, and then, and then Jay Crowder, uh, 43. I'm willing to take that shot. 
I like Barton fine. Um, I'm not going to do the Hardaway and Finney Smith thing either. He's there, the ownership's going to be high. I understand it without Curry. And I mean, I, I'm just not going to get all over that personally. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, if you wanted to go to Bridges, that's fine. But mostly it's going to be those other guys for me. Uh, even Bojan is only 5,500 over here. Not the worst thing in the world. But I'm not as into Gallinari. I'm more Crowder, Barnes, Harris, Ingram. Yeah, pretty, I mean, very, very, uh, again, these, these plays are nothing too wild. But, again, you pair them with the right guys, you can get a lot of, you can get a lot of juice out of it. I mean, look, now, if you play Buddy Heald, if you play Buddy Heald, yep. you're already, I mean, and also, like, the weird part is Ingram's going to be owned, but, like, I expect him to be not as, like, as crazy owned as we, you think. Huh. Um, so, at, at power forward, there's, there's two bits of chalk. And, actually, I think that, that, that the, the ownership is reflecting kind of where, where my opinions are. So, so, let me just kind of go through this. So, I do think that Max Kleber at 4,400 is a you know, really, really strong play with Kristoff out, um, Porzingis out. Um, and he's – I'm probably you – know, I would say lock in, whatever. But he's, he's – I'm very confident playing him. And Zion is fine. I mean, again, again, the reason why I'm not putting him in this main lineup is just, again, because I think that Ingram at small forward is more of a priority for me than Zion at power forward because I can get the, the power forward production elsewhere. So while Zion is perfectly fine and I'm going to probably play him in lineups without Ingram, um, I think I can get the sim similar production, production without kind of eating into my, you know, my Ingram production here. So uh, other power forwards, again, none of these are going to be that – low own, but I like Randall, uh, especially if I'm going to play Trey. I think this is perfect. You know, you have Randall and Trey together. So I have no problem with Randall and the ownership he's going to garner. Um, Christian Wood is, is fine, but he's not really fitting into the other stuff I want to do. Bielitsa here is, is again, fine. Um, but I think I prefer those other guys like Bogdan or Heal as far as the secondary, second, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, King, I want to put in, or even the first two, um, and then Bam, I guess is is is, is okay, but I, I kind of want to avoid that game. The one guy again is is showing very very low ownership, and uh, you know if I'm not going to play Trey in the point guard position, I mean if Collins is really going to be sub ten percent, I'm going to have to try it. Um, but aside from that, I mean I think my kind of lineup here kind of speaks for itself. I do like Randall just because he fits so well with Trey. He is fine in and of himself, and I think it's kind of a nice, easy way to play. Yeah, that's fine. That's that's fine. I'm fine with Randall taking. I mean, it, it still feels volatile for the ownership, but that's all right. Yeah. Um, and and another speaking of like a little bit volatile, a guy like also just you know uh, in that same vein, sort of as Bielitsa at 4800. Um, I also, I mean, I, I think Kleber is going to be hard for me to fade over here. Yep. I just. I think he's, he just makes the most sense of anybody on the slate. Um, I'll just keep mentioning the unknown Paul Millsap is appealing to me, but uh, I actually think Bam might be the other guy I prefer um, at power forward here. I think that there's an argument to be made for him really crushing versus Butler tonight. Um, so I like him at, let me see real quick where we have our ownership. Oh, he's pretty high. Um, but still, I like him quite a bit. And, uh, Definitely a way I'm considering going. I I don't know, man. It's not other than Cleaver. I, I feel like that's I'm gonna lock him in and play some Zion. Bam, I like. I like Christian Wood. Um, feels wrong to play Christian Wood over Bam here for some reason, but I get it. Like you know what I mean? There's something weird about that. The really low on John Collins is kind of interesting to me too, as well as you mentioned Randall. Um, I'm not loving a fourth guy again. So, I, Bielitsa, fine. Randall, fine. Adebayo, fine. Wood, fine. But I don't love any of them. It's mostly Kleba and Zion are my favorites. And I know they're chalk, but it's okay because I'm playing Buddy Heald. <laughs> so, you're, at, at center, you scared, you scared me a little bit at DraftKings when you were suggesting to me the possibility that maybe Mitchell Robinson doesn't play. Um, so, I have, to, I have to kind of watch for that um, because I've – my, my two favorite plays on, at, at center um, are either Mitchell Robinson at 5,700 or, I mean, you want to say price enforced or whatever it is, but I don't know how many minutes he's going to play, whatever, but, but Embiid's only 9K on, on FanDuel. Um, I'd, love to, I'd love to get to him, uh, I think. 
just because if, if I don't, where am I? So if there's Mitchell Robinson at 5,700, I guess you could play Steven Adams again. I mean, he always rates to be kind of an okay play. Then you're talking about like Cody Zeller or then paying all the way up for Jokic. I, I, I don't I, – I kind of rather play – I don't know. Would I rather play him beat than Jokic? I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's actually a discussion. Um, so center, I, again, I, I guess it feels – least confident because my favorite guy is Mitch Robinson and there is certain certainly amount of decent amount of risk to that especially if there's a chance he sits or gets rested on a back-to-back so maybe center is the toughest position for me actually I don't know yeah it's a it's an interesting one I I think that I'm sort of defaulting just to playing Embiid or uh, Jokic okay but I also don't mind Steven Adams and I think the ownership is going to be lower than maybe you'd expect. I would rather play, I think, Steven Adams at lower ownership than Mitchell Robinson on the back-to-back personally. Well, that's easy. You know what I mean? That I still have money for him. That's, that's, that's easy. Right, right, right. Um, and especially considering I have Randall in the same lineup, you know, so. Right. But what about, like, I, th- I don't think Thon Maker is, like, a bad play, necessarily. I think that there's upside for him there. It's not, I don't, it's not exciting, but you could, and you could also, instead of him, like, you could play Cody Zeller against a team that plays big, although we don't know it could be Biombo, so it's kind of tricky. Um, it's not a great position, man. It's, I, I'm with you here. I, I think Mitch Robinson, assuming that every, we hear he's good to go, makes sense. Um, but I think, again, I would rather lean a little bit more towards Adams and, um, yeah, for potentially uh, just Adams, Embiid, and Jokic for me. If Mitch, Adam, if, if Mitch Robinson is out uh, – Portis is 4,200. Throw that out there. Sure, absolutely. And I actually, in long shot tournaments, I don't mind taking a shot in Portis anytime. You know that. But yeah. yeah so, 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 like you, like you keep on, you kept on, on mentioning, and this applies to really all GPPs, but I think tonight especially is all you need is a couple, right? So, so you, you, you were kind of referring to healed a couple of times. Listen, I don't need to worry about being too chalky here because I got Buddy healed and, and, and it's true, you know, because first of all, Buddy Hill, not only guys like that, guys like that are your classic GPP plays for me because number one, they're, they're low owned. Number two, they have just wild range of outcomes, which is good. Uh, number three is they're part of a stackable game, you know? So, so I, I, I think that, that, that taking a, a really decent sized stand on a guy like that, you know, I'm not telling you guys to all play him, right. Or, or anybody to play a particular guy, but, try to learn for the future and other slates is guys like that are, are guys that you could take shots on. And if you're, you know, leveraged enough with him, you don't really need all that much more else, uh, that much more else. That was very well said. You don't need a lot more. <laughs> yeah. I totally agree though. You don't. And, um, and yeah. And also lineup construction is also important, which is why I tend to try to, you know, if I really like four guards and two of them are lower and two of them are expensive, I tend to try to play the two expensive ones together just because it differentiates the two lineup-wise, if I like them enough anyway, and then I try and correlate the lineups accordingly. Um, another guy I didn't mention, just real quickly, a power forward. I'm finding myself with a tiny bit of Nick, with a, of Melly. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there, that I think he's... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to... I don't think I'm going to yeah, get through here. You know? It feels too light over here. I just wanted to throw it out there as a, a guy who I just threw in a couple of long shots, because I like that game, and I, and I want to get weird act, you know, exposure to it. And I, we didn't, I know we talked about Dorian Finney Smith, and I don't really need it either. But if there's a spot where you kind of do, if you feel like you're off the board enough elsewhere, I don't really, I really don't mind it that much. Um, I, I, that is pretty much where I'm at. Well, you could play Melly, you could play, you know, Nerland's Noel at 4,100 too. You could so. make an argument for Baysmore, honestly, tonight a little bit. Like, I really like that game, man. He's been good too. He's been pretty consistent around the 25s. Um, so there's, there's options, you know what I mean? And, there's plenty of places to differentiate. I would suggest doing it at shooting guard. That's what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, there's that. You definitely have some options of places you can differentiate tonight. I don't think power forward and point guard are my favorite places to do that. Um, I, w- I, w- I would not play Bogdan. Um, it's just me. I, I wouldn't play Bogdan and Heald in the same lineup. Um, but aside from that, I, I have no other constraints with Sacramento guys. I, I, don't, don't, play- I, I don't mind at all Bogdan and Heald personally. I actually. Oh, okay. I okay. actually think they can be okay. I, it, it's not natural. You're right. I do have a Fox Field lineup, but yeah. I've also got Ingram Ball and uh, 
and uh, Zion in that lineup, which I'm going to get one of those out of there. But I just, you know, I really want to target that game on a slate that I really don't like. And look, if we get what we need out of that game, I mean, we're going to we're going to crush because there are these these ownerships are just not nearly high enough, um, with the exception of a few different spots. Yeah, I I I, I promise you that that uh, I will I will not be turning a profit until at the very least, very earliest, like midnight. I know. I was in the first place yesterday in a couple tournaments earlier. I saw, I saw that. I, did, I, I, I saw that on Vandal, actually. I saw you were uh, – That was crushing. And, uh, yeah, and then, uh, my single entry somehow ended up like with like a monster score. It was like that, – that's usually the last one I whittle out if it's not a did, high did, did, did that end up doing well? Because I remember – it's really funny. So I, I was in that one, and I had like everybody late. I had this, all this Warrior stuff, and you had all this early stuff. So I was, I was trying to calculate, okay, Bobby's like 180 points ahead of me. But I got like five guys left. I wonder what are the chances we end up, where we end up together. So I was wondering where you're. I, I, I didn't follow up. I know neither of us wanted. You know, so I was wondering where you. Uh, it did I did well. Too, I it like out of this world, great, but it, it did well. Okay. But um, yeah, mine mine didn't cash at all. So you probably did that. Oh no, I was like fifth or sixth or sixth, something like that. I was. Oh pretty, really? Oh, sure. yeah, it, was, it was pretty high for that for that thing. Um, okay. But it was not. You know, unfortunately, I had a lot more money in other tournaments. Um, yep. Yep. Right. That's it. Anyway. Guys, hopefully this was helpful. We will be li live for Eastern time. We'll have probably a better idea about the slate then on QLTV. Make sure you join and subscribe. And please give us the little like um, for Sheets. I'm Bobby Fye. We'll see you at the top of the leaderboards. Let's do it.